Hey Ty, I don't know what to do and have Yo. family trouble and I ain't really have a good day after college plus essay. Chai is beyond stressful and worse of all, my dad lost my trust over me and my brother and IT hurt a bit and can take a toll on me. What's sir advice? Bro, I'm not laughing at you. I swear to God, I'm not. I swear to God, I'm not laughing at you. You just said, listen, I, I promise you I'm not laughing at you, bro. You just said that in the middle of us laughing at some, some like, weird, random shit. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm going to be honest. If you in college, that means you're probably over the age of 18, which you probably have to, you, you're going to start getting hit with a realization, especially as a man. But this is just in general, bro. Like, you got you to gotta take, you got to make sure you straight first. And that's not living life selfishly. That's not like saying that nobody can come before you or that you can't look out for other people or or do things out of the kindness of your heart. But you got to make sure you straight first, because if you ain't straight, nobody going to be straight. If you ain't if you ain't, if you don't bring no food home or if you ain't taking care of yourself, can't nobody you can't support anybody else because you're depleted. You're dead. You're drained. You know what I'm saying? So. It's, it's really a freeing mentality when you have the mentality that you are all you got. You are all you need. You know what I'm saying? Now, anybody else that's in your life, that's loyal to you, that shows you love, that supports you, it's that much more of a blessing. And you appreciate their loyalty or their, or their contribution to your life more. But you got to realize, bro, like don't expect no love. Don't expect no loyalty. Don't expect no handouts. Don't expect anything from anybody. Your life will be easier. And that's not like a pessimistic thing either. Like I got a lot of solid people in my life that if I was stranded and my car was on the side of the road, I know I could call them. You know what I'm saying? I have a, I have a list of people. You know what I'm saying? But they don't, they don't say that to disrespect them. That just means that like, um, you know, I, I just got me. I got to make sure I'm straight, bro. As they should too. You know what I'm saying? But when you expect things, bro, that's when you get disappointed like that. Your heart broken and all that shit. This is what I like to say, bro. I've never been cheated on by a woman. I've never been played by a woman. It never was my my loyalty and my trust never been broken in a situation like that. It's always been from from people that were closer to me. Not not some woman I met and I got in my feelings and I started liking her. It never was that. It always was deeper than that for, in my life. And I ain't gonna lie, that shit hit hard because I feel like I used to be very naive when it came to trust because there were certain things that you would be like to yourself. I would never do that. So it, it hits you harder, bro. That's that's the only way I can explain it. But that shit has only made me calloused as a man. And it's like, hey, now I'm straight. You know, no matter what, no matter which way anything go, I always made sure I'm straight. A lone wolf, I'm to myself, I'm out the way. I don't bother nobody, I don't mind nobody's business. I take care of my community, I help anybody I can, and I live my life the way I want to, man. I can't ask for more. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's the ones you look out for that you have to look out for. Come on, man. Now y'all spitting fucking bars, nigga. At the end of the day, you got you like no one else do. Come on, man. You 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 are your first gift in life. You are a temporary gift to yourself. When you really think about it, bro, you, you are going to return yourself when you die. You got to give yourself back to the world. You know what I'm saying? So why, like, self-hate, low self-esteem is like the worst thing in the world, bro, because it's like, you all you got. How could you betray the motherfucker in the mirror? That's the only motherfucker that understand you. That's the only motherfucker that will listen to you, that will know you genuinely for who you are when nobody else does. That's the only motherfucker that'll know you and understand you with your goddamn mouth closed. Back against the wall, uh, everybody hating you, everybody doubting you, everybody not believing in you. And that motherfucker in the mirror got you that been there every day, every single day. I'm in my skin 24-7. I gotta get me. I can't not get me. This is why self love is the self hate is the worst form of murder, bro. It's like it's like I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, it's you. It's it's either you against you or you against the world, man. You gotta have you, man. It's, it's you gotta have you. You gotta have you. <clears throat> How you feel about Lil Uzi being a Satanist? It is of my belief that a lot of times when celebrities do things like that, um, that they are being controversial. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like that's that's my belief. I don't I don't truly think that little little Uzi has a uh, like pentagram in his living room and then there's like a goat's head cut off and his five candles. Like I, I I just don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? I just believe he's being controversial. I believe he probably don't even believe in in Satan. I just think he 
does that shit to be edgy and controversial. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got people that take their religion very seriously, so they ain't having that shit. And if that's you, stand on your morals. If, if Lil Uzi saying things like that and doing things like that goes against your religion, goes against your morals, then stand your ground. Same, same thing with the Little Nas X blood shoes. I ain't gonna lie, me personally, if that's really, that was really his blood in the shoes, I wouldn't touch them shoes. That's just me. Um, That's just me. There was literally like a conspiracy. Wasn't Uzi supposed to die at a certain age or some shit, bro? Like... I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta be careful with y'all consume, bro. Just be careful, man. Yeah. And I remember, because I was listening to Uzi back then. And they was coming up with all them conspiracies and all that, bro. You gotta realize, bro, like, motherfuckers... It, it, it's a, it's, it, I do believe that is some secret shit going on around in this world, and definitely there's a lot of underground, underworld shit. But I don't know. They be, they be on some real elite, elite shit when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's more than you being famous. A lot of times, the famous people be pawns. They don't be in the inner circle. Cause a lot of times they don't even know they pawns. And I'm not even talking about Uzi at this point. I'm just saying in general with all this shit. You know what I'm saying? I said, I got a degree in Uziology. Have you ever heard of Kevin Steve? So you said something through the bus, through the bus, and I opened it to him. Probably, it sounded like some deep shit, man. Ever heard of Bohemian Grove? Let me tell you, I was into all this shit when I was like nine years old. All this conspiracy theory shit, all this woke shit. I was doing this shit when I was like literally nine years I remember being like nine, ten years old and looking into Walt Disney, all the conspiracy. I remember it was this TV show, fucking um, Gravity Falls, that was out way back then. And even back then, though. How my cable was, you had Disney Channel, you had the History Channel, you had Nat Geo Wild and all these things. So I've always been a very curiously minded person. So I would go from like literally cartoons, TV shows. No, let me tell you something, chat. I always, I, my mind just always grew up fast, bro. And I don't mean to say like, oh, I grew up younger and all that. I just thought my curiosity always had the best of me. So I was always a learner. I was always curious, very inquisitive. So... Ancient aliens, right? All, all this shit. I always was very curious. Always wanted to learn those things. Always wanted to see what it was about. And um, at a young age, bro, even even you look at Cartoon Network, I went straight to Adult Swim. <laughs> Cart uh, uh, bro, Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, or Cartoon Network, oh, that shit was cool. Bro, I went straight to Adult Swim. I was all all into the, the nightlife, bro. I was a night owl as a kid. I'm still a night owl now. I still, that, that was like my earlier days of being a fucking, like a loner and to myself and like an anti-social kind of person is staying up late at night because guess what? Everybody sleep. Nobody will bother you. Nobody will talk to you. I'm like this to this day. As social, as, as much social skills as I had, as I've gotten, that's just because I live in a big city. I've worked jobs that have put me in situations where I've constantly interacted with people. So it's like a muscle. That shit, you, you build that muscle. So anybody can go from being a, an introvert and anti-social to being socially savvy but we just don't do these things or practice these kind of habits nowadays now with that being said though when you spend a lot of time you're alone and especially when you stay up at night that's when you're and you're not watching porn you're not watching porn funny part is i got a funny ass story of me getting caught watching porn when i was like 10 years old so i was watching porn but the thing was i wasn't even watching it and like beating my shit as a kid, bro. It's like I was just watching it because I was curious. I'm dead serious, bro. I was watching HBO late at night. I think even Showtime and with some other channels in between HBO and Stars. Because Stars was like the bottom. HBO was like the top of all the premium channels, bro. So it was a bunch of channels in between. I think Showtime was in between that. But HBO definitely had some night, some night, uh, you know, if you know, you know. Cinemax, right. HBO after midnight, bro. That shit was a different, uh, yeah, yeah. If you know, you know. They had explicit content. They had all types of shit, bro. They even had like documentaries around a whole bunch of everything, bro. Why y'all think y'all heard of the show Euphoria, right? That show all about drugs and all this explicit shit. HBO been on that, bro. Game of Thrones. You ever seen all that? They're like, bro. HBO been on that shit, bro. They never been PG. They never been fucking. Entertainment, bro. They, they entertainment always been the hardcore shit. Always. Always been hardcore. Murder, death, cutting the motherfucking head off. Like, HBO always been unhinged, unscripted, wild, and just what the fuck. 
I would be curious to see who the fuck is like the director or owner of that shit, what kind of personality they got. That's that's off the chart though. But like I said, I feel like as a kid, bro, I just always been into like shit that just makes me think that shit that I just kind of knew that I wasn't supposed to be seeing or learning. And a part of that led into conspiracy theories, all types of weird shit, bro. I know you barely had that. All types of shit. Thanks, Ty. Appreciate Ty T S H. I be tough, but all right. You only got you and even family or own blood. I T can hurt cause it's family, but have you experienced that or know anyone W family problems? I know it's going to go away eventually, but all love T H O U a real O G. And definitely, bro. Everybody does. I don't think nobody's family is perfect at all. At all, but you got two choices though. You got you got the choice of allowing a negative experience, an emotion, lead to resentment between you and a family member, or you can or you can open your heart and, and embrace choosing to to love unconditionally, and that's a tough decision because let's say something that they do, whether they have a certain behavior with a, a substance or anger issues or whatever be, habits they have or behavior they have that triggers you or a bad experience. Or something bad psychologically that that bother you in the past, it, it it's gonna be hard to overpower that with that level of maturity. And I'm not. It's definitely easier said than done. It's something you have to practice. It's something, but it will help you grow mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. When you use circumstances where you would have uh, responded with a negative emotion, a bad reaction, angry, whatever you name it, and you sit here and say, you know what, I ain't going there. I ain't doing that. I'm a, matter of fact, how can I use this as an opportunity to grow? How can I use this as an opportunity to be a better version of myself? I'm not going there. I'm not I'm not stooping to that level. I don't want to feel like that. Because all that, bro, all that anger shit, all that sad shit, all that hate and shit, that's shit that you feel. The other person don't feel that. I mean, even, let's say you angry. Somebody make you angry, you throw something at them physically. Like, that physical pain going to go away. Your ass going to be mad for however long. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit, like you feel that shit. When you start to realize all that shit is within you, you feel the anger, you feel the sadness, you feel the loneliness, you feel all that shit. You stop holding on to those emotions because they don't feel that shit. They might be happy. They might be satisfied that you're feeling that mad and angry. Who knows? They might be hurting too. A lot of a lot of this shit is complicated, bro. And uh, I feel like as human beings, we make this shit harder than it needs to be. It could, I feel like it would be a lot more simpler than it actually is. You know what I'm saying? You drinking poison accepting, expecting someone else to be hurt. Oh, God. That's the common like saying around that shit. And then Danny Tatch just comes in with a random comment. They need to stop making Fast and Furious movies. Bro, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention, bro. You heard of chat GPT? Yeah, I know what that is. The crazy part is, as soon as I drop out of school, they come up with some shit like that. And what I'm thinking of doing is going back and taking like a very, very low amount of classes. Because when I went back, I took a full roster. Like I took five, six classes, 17, 18 credits. So it was damn near some full time shit. I shouldn't have did it like that. I should have used my scholarship to take like little, little tiny bit of classes here and there to where it wouldn't disrupt. All this too much. Just doing a dojo. Appreciate what you do. Appreciate you, man. I've been using that for my papers, bro. They come up with some some shit that writes your whole homework as soon as I drop out, bro. Like what the fuck? <clears throat> Three would be calm. I think it would be because I, I honestly I don't know why I try to do that. How did you really not start letting things bother you or get to you? It's a choice. It's a mental choice, bro. It really is a mental choice. It's it's a mental choice. Every, and you and you damn near have to build up the strength to prevent the reaction. Let's say <clears throat> I'm driving. Somebody cuts me off. Let's just build a story here. I'm driving. I got bad road rage, right? I'm driving. Somebody cut me off. That shit pisses me off. I start snapping at them, beat my horn. This is a habit for me. This is normal. I go home and I say, yo, I tend to, I noticed this. This is self-awareness. This is this is like the breakdown of the video of self-mastery that y'all know. Y'all can watch this and get more depth. But I go home and I notice, I'm like, damn, I be getting pissed off when somebody cut me off in traffic. I don't like that shit. So now I got the self-awareness. I recognized 
I at least had the conversation with myself. Maybe I can't stop it yet, but I'm aware of like this anger. I'm aware of like what triggers it. I'm aware of the whole process. Now, next time it happens, right? I can remember when I said to myself that I don't like when this shit makes me mad. So boom, somebody cut me off in traffic a week later, two weeks later, a month later. At a certain point, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting used to talking to myself about this shit. And the more I talk to myself, the more I start to think about it. So next time it happens, I can say, nope, you know what? I had this conversation with myself. I ain't going to do it. That's really a simplified version of self-control, bro. Like that's, <laughs> that's really a simplified version. And at the end of the day, it's just a choice. Are you strong enough to make the choice or, or not? As y'all know, one of my favorite quotes, strong enough to have it all, too weak to take it. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? After you make that first choice and that second choice, you keep choosing to, to control your anger or control whatever the reaction is. This could even be like an addiction. You know what I'm saying? After a while, you start to build that muscle and then you, your self-control be much easier, bro. You, you become a less impulsive person overall, even outside of road rage. It might be spending. It might be uh, arguing with other people. It might be you name it. You fucking name it. <clears throat> you ever heard of a book called Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics? No, I think I heard somebody mention that before, though. I'm damn near 100% sure of this. Somebody put a video in it. Thoughts on metacognition. Isn't that just thinking about what you're thinking about? Isn't that just mindfulness? Or, or am I wrong? <clears throat> be, become conscious of your unconscious. Oh, God. That's all that it is. What's your thoughts on mushrooms and microdosing? <clears throat> Before Jordan Peterson got kind of like how he is now, he had a he had a uh, a clip I seen that made me think a lot about that and why why I don't use shrooms, why I don't use any of them mentally or stimulating alternatives, right? He said, "Beware of unearned wisdom." But. I also seen another video where a, a doctor was going over like a lot of benefits on depression and, and things like that when people would microdose. So, you know, if you talk, if you do your own research and, you know, do what you do, be an educated person, make an educated decision. I'm going to say personally, I've never used shrooms in my life. I've seen people talk to me about, you know, life changing epiphanies that they've had when they've done these things. And I, I don't knock them. I don't I don't say that. They're lying, but I just, I just don't, I don't like, I don't mess with substances for a reason. And it has to do with, you know, my family history and, and personal reasons. So I don't like substances or raw. That's why I don't drink alcohol. Um, that's why I'd stay away from weed. You know what I'm saying? Like with all due respect. And I've spoken before and I've drunk before. As she just said, smoking almost died after taking shrooms. God damn. Thoughts on people having no inner dialogue? There's, they, those are the real NPCs, man. <laughs> if you can't talk to yourself in your head, that's crazy. <clears throat> For real. Dropping gems. Dinner's on me. My fucking God, I do need to order some food soon. I'm hungry as shit. Big 100 bits, man. I appreciate that, man. Y'all went crazy today on the subs, bro. We started with like 683. And it's at 841, man. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Cats or dogs? To be honest, I favor dogs more. But I, I do love cats. I don't have no animals right now. I grew up around a bunch of animals, bro. I had a parakeet. I had a fucking... I had a bunch of animals growing up, bro. My grandpa used to own horses. I used to watch Animal Planet all the fucking time, bro. I love animals. My crib gonna look like a fucking zoo when I really get the crib I want and I'm in the, like I'm where I wanna be. My shit gonna look like a zoo on God. How you even growing your hair? I honestly don't know why I don't remember this number, but I know it's been at least four years. At least, maybe even five. But you can't tell the length of my hair, Just like you know, I get shrinkage and shit like that. My hair actually taking out my shit come like past my chest. How much you spend on food weekly? Around like 200. 200 something. Gil with another gifted sub, man. I appreciate you. Brother! Shit, 
your strongest lion or tiger? You don't know nothing about animals if you think a, a lion can beat a tiger. <clears throat> Watching Ryan Garcia versus Tank fight. Not really in a sports that much. Um, but I probably just watch it for the fun of it, you know, to spend time with people. Because every time it's some major fight like that or some major event, you know, your folks tend to get together and watch and all that. That should be real good vibes. I know one thing I can beat the, that cat. You thought you was funny, bro? You really thought you was funny, bro? Have you become better at pausing and flowing a conversation? Um, Just start practicing more conversations with people in everyday life, bro. There's always potential for conversation. You can get on the elevator with somebody and say, hey, how you doing today? They say, I'm good. How about yourself? You say, I'm good. Thanks for asking. You know, the weather's getting nice lately. I'm loving this new season. And then they say something. Like, bro, conversation can be so fucking random, bro. It's it's sending and receiving. So what you, you give something and they and they receive it and they send something back. Now, if they don't send you nothing back, fuck them. Just go talk to the, you know, keep your life moving, bro. Thoughts on the character. What character? The character Taekwondo. Maybe I'm talking too fast, though. Maybe I said all that way too fast. What's that? Can you repeat that? Ain't hear nobody say it better. 100% like a faith, at least a lack of a belief. No, I've been reading a deep ass book called The Master Key System. Though that shit has some spitting in there. Spitting. Which might honestly make me think about. Um, another video style, really. <laughs> new video, new with jewelry, new video, new clone. Must be a clone. This is just silver, bro. I ain't go crazy. I just wanted to try some shit out. You know what I'm saying? Let's go up against center. Have a three-five or higher. Napoleon Hill's book. I don't remember the name of the author because I just picked up the book. How often do you read and for how long? I try to read every day and at least for 30 minutes. Try to have that shit be like the first thing you do in the morning. What do you think happens after we die? I won't know till I die. What's your thoughts on the little girl who found out the president's was related except one? Why are y'all just now surprised about that? You read as a man thinketh. I think I got that behind me. I, uh, I don't remember, bro. I think I did read that book, though. I'm not sure. I'll probably say no. I'm, I'm going to just say no if I can't find it. Hold on. Uh, I'll have to look for it. I ain't going to lie. I got, more, I got a books in my living room, books in my bed, books under my bed. Um, In my bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Charles F. Handel. That's the author. That's the author's name. But I don't know if I read it as a man think. I feel like that's such a uh, common... That's like such a popular book. I feel like I did read that. Fuck it. Um, besides the books, with a whole lot of knowledge, what else do you read? Um, honestly, I, I didn't start reading a lot again until like two years ago. I think it would be like two years ago on my 19th birthday. And my, you know, y'all know my birthday in May and shit. So my 19th birthday is when I got back into reading again. And I'll be 22 this May. But throughout high school, if it wasn't like school related, I probably wasn't reading. It's, except like my sophomore year, I remember I got back into reading for a little bit. And that's when I read the uh, 48 Laws of Power. Um, But yeah, bro. That's the crazy part. Like I, was not, I wasn't watching a lot of content throughout high school. I wasn't reading a lot. I was just like, I went to one of them high schools, bro, that was try hard as fuck for no reason, bro. But then again, when I went to college, like my college was easier than my high school. For that, because of that type of preparation. He said, "How do you recognize an NPC, or how do you know if you're not one?" What kind of question is that, bro? Recognize an NPC for their inability to challenge their own perspective. It's a very direct answer. If somebody can't question their own perspective, they're nine times out of ten an NPC. NPC question, oh God. 
Thoughts on your birthday being on Bitcoin Pizza Day? I'm going to let the awkward silence kill you, bro, because what the fuck kind of question was that? What do you say to people who have trouble conversating because their mind feel like conversations are kind of useless? I mean, if the conversation is useless to you, then don't have it. I, like, I just go around talking to people for no reason. Hell no. I barely talk. I can count on one hand how many people I talk to daily. And sometimes it's not even that. Like, I ain't gonna lie. It takes a, it takes a certain type of person to be my one of my like friends. Because you might, you might not hear from me for weeks. And then, and then we'll talk again like nothing ever happened. <clears throat> Nigga didn't stop this shit. I started. Niggas can never do it like me. Chain looking nice and all. God, silver really shines. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Like you, you would think you would think a nigga a nigga bust down the chain and something. Nigga, this is just silver. On God. That's how y'all know y'all real friends. Oh, God, for real, bro. I ain't, listen, and a lot of my homies, man, I done had 10 years plus, 15, actually, now if you really counting. I done had the same homies I knew since, since freshman year of high school. I mean, I lost a couple homies for reasons that, you know, that was on their end of the, in the spectrum. You know, it ain't, it ain't no type of shady shit I ever did. But people people show you who they are man that's one thing life going to tell you people show you who the fuck they are motherfucker cannot hide they demons it's up to you to ignore that shit or you to hold them accountable and saying yo i don't like how you move dog i don't like the type of time you be on like i ain't gonna lie if i ever seen my homie steal from his mom i look at him crazy he wouldn't be my homie no more cuz that's some shit i never do And when you start to build relationships in your life like that, they last a long time. I remember going to college, right? And one of my homies I went to high school with for years, right? Um, he, Me and him was roommates. Never had one argument or one problem. Living with each other every day. Roommates in college. But we, we went in there seeing people call each other best friends. All types of shit. They become roommates. They, they got problems. They beefing. They ain't cool no more. You look up to this day like, damn, where the hell is such and such at? Man, fuck, her, fuck them, blah, 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 because, like, damn, <laughs> shit. Mm-mm, man, shorty, 2,500 on jeans. What's your daily routine as an entrepreneur? Honestly, um, besides, like, you know, Patreon calls, besides, like, the weekly shit that, I, that, I, that, I, that like, is consistently in my schedule, like, Patreon calls, or, like, you know, posting TikTok clips or, you know, going to the gym, reading, um, you know, and a bunch of other things I can think of. I may mostly, like, spend my time creating out for my day what I want. But that's because I thought about my long-term goals and my long-term plans. So my day-to-day -day basis is just building towards that. It's not like my, my days are grand and spectacular. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just me staying down till I come up and doing the things that I need to do. So I stay ready for what I need to be and who I who I want to become. Thoughts on vaping? I feel like most of the time when people do it, they have some sort of anxiety or 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 whatever, and it's like you know when they get that hit, it eases them. That's why most people smoke. Most people don't smoke because they oh they feel cool. Y'all know some people that are followers. And that do smoke because they do want to be cool and fit in. Besides that fraction of people, a lot of times people will do things like that because it's a stress reliever. And, you know, they, they dealing with shit. They go hit that vape. They feel a little bit better because that's it's, it's chemicals in it that make them feel better. But what I will say is if you can develop the strength to deal with stress without using any substance or running to anything, you'll be strong enough to deal with it forever. But if you develop a habit of dealing with stress or anxiety with a substance, then you'll need that substance. I can sit in anxiety. I can sit in stress. I can sit in pressure. I won't think of grabbing anything or, or needing anything because it's all a habit. Like, what do you do? It, we all have habits. It's just your habits are different from mine. Mine are different from yours. His are different from hers. Hers are different from his. Everybody has habits. It just, it's just how we are as humans. Choose your habits wisely, though, and, and what your habits get you out of life. 
Because all this shit is just input and output, bro. What you put in is what you get out. You reap what you sow. So if my habits is like learning things that's going to benefit me later, like editing a video or making a thumbnail or how to, you know, get into the algorithm or things that benefit my business that I learned early on, even before I was posting consistently, I'm talking about like over some years ago, that shit came to help me later down the line. Those were seeds I planted a long time ago, a long time ago. You smoke that Popeye pipe, man, you, you couldn't find anything in this bitch but oxygen. He said, hey, Todd, how do I get like you? <laughs> I wanted to post that clip, bro. He said, no, like you. Like you like me or me like you? Man, that shit was funny as hell, bro. Did you aspire to be a content creator or did it happen naturally? Honestly, I, like this sounds crazy, but no. Nah. No. Nah. Like I just wanted to, I just wanted to have the impact that I have, like the influence. And I, and I was going to do that in my career. On some, on some like doctor shit. And I was going to, you know, use my career and the shit that I achieved to go back into my community of Philly and say, yo, I come from a project building. I come from the hood. I come from that. I look just like you. I'm tatted up and I still went in, uh, you know, a field where nobody looked like me, come from where I come from, and still excelled amongst those people. And this has allowed me to do that on a bigger scale than a, a local and community scale. And it still has allowed me to touch my community. You know what I'm saying? I saw Todd Oda's Fortnite videos. Yeah, that was just me gaming to have fun. You know what I'm saying? And just recording things and, and creating content. You got a bigger influence than it now. That's what I'm saying. Like, so it, 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 God willing, it changed in a different impact. It changed on a level that I couldn't even predict or I didn't even know what was gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Funny part is I did have shit written like this in a journal. Like, get 100K, get my first 10K views on the video. Um, whole bunch of random shit. Like, go on a breakfast club, go on, like, write my own book, um, graduate high school. Like, I had a bunch of random ass goals. <clears throat> you believe in God? Of course. I don't, I don't believe in, like, let's say you putting a, a name on it. Like, but you say Yahweh, Allah, karma, the universe. God, whatever you, you know, whatever you call that entity in your mind is what you do. How do you become attached from the outcome while still grinding towards it? I got a whole video where I talked about the law of detachment and I went in deep on that. But it's the quickest way I can put it about applying the law of attach detachment and really going for your goal without being attached to it and this is what it, this is the most important thing about this that you need to understand it's about the clarity of your mind when you detach from something when you are attached to something it's like you it's easier for you to be a tr triggered emotionally it's easier for you to be irritated it's easier for it to build up and bother you and for you to be frustrated with not achieving that result but when you detach from it you don't think as emotionally. It's easy for you to, to think constructively, to think objectively. It's easy for you to put your ego out of the conversation and say, what is the true way to achieve this goal? By any means necessary. Not, not my way, but the way. And how can the way to achieve it contribute to, to my way, my story, and how I'm gonna go about achieving what I want out of life? And you know, when you attach to something, you really, it's like, Right, detach and not associate, dissociate. Right, so it's like when you're attached to something, it's like y'all, y'all know that y'all ever, y'all ever worked for something or wanted something so bad you ain't getting that shit hurt you. I mean, it's like how we all think about rejection. Y'all and y'all be like, oh, I get rejected by this woman and I hate myself and destroy my confidence and I. That's because you was very. Uh, uh, I, and I like to use a bigger goal than approaching a woman, right? Like getting into school or starting this new business or getting your channel off the ground and things like that. Or becoming improving at a skill or improving a skill at something, whatever. And anything in life, bro, it really takes for you to look in the fucking mirror and say, what do I need? Or what can take me to the next level? And if you have not developed the skill of, of being honest with yourself, telling yourself the truth, looking for your flaws, 
looking for what can improve you, looking to be embarrassed. Because embarrassment tells you a lot. If you feel embarrassed, that means you're probably doing something new or trying something you haven't tried before. And it's it's like damn near shameful for how bad you are at it. Embarrassment is a good feeling because guess what? You ass until you're not. You suck until you don't. It's embarrassing until it's not. You know what I'm saying? So when it's no longer embarrassing, now, now, now everybody going to start dicking you. And everybody going to start, you know, hyping you up and following you and all this type of shit. And people going to start respecting the results a little bit differently. I mean, you even look at hair. I remember I had just a curly top, right? So, you know, my hair go all the way down to my chest, right? You know, the shrinkage going to pull it up. But I remember my first guy, I had these little ass braids, bro. You know, people would say to me, like, damn, what, you know, what made you, what made you get braids? But that kind of question, they're not hating. But it's like slick saying that you don't look good with the braids. People are like, you know, what, what made you get the braids, man? What made you change your hair up? Because I look, I, come on, man. I was handsome with my curly top. It was a look they was familiar with. Quick arrogance, right? But when you, I tried something new, it was like, damn, what the hell? Why the fuck you get that? And people fuck with, people don't fuck with it until they do. Just like Todd when he playing the guitar. Oh, God, bro. I got videos of me not even... <laughs> Of me holding the pick wrong. Or, or me not knowing one song. And I probably know like 10 plus, at least. Let me see. I, if I really count it, I probably know like 13, 15 songs on the guitar now. But every time I learn a new song, it's like I, I work on a new skill. So it's like I'm compiling all these things. My music theory IQ is getting higher now. You know what I'm saying? But you got you to gotta leave that space of being embarrassed. You know nothing. You're like a damn near baby. But the thing about me, I ain't never been afraid to be uh, to to be the dumbest in the room, or to know nothing. I ask questions. That's that, one thing about me. I'm gonna ask questions. One thing about me, I take the back seat. Hey man, oh, what's, so what's the game on this? You know what I'm saying? What's the spill on that? That's how you get the real plays. That's how you start learn learning shit. You feel what I'm saying? You lucky. Somebody told me I got finesse when I first got twist. So you know, I ain't gonna grind you up, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You should have got back for that. You should got back for that. I ain't gonna. I'm from Philly. We bid on. We bid on everything. Or y'all call it roasting. We bid on everything. So niggas had tough skin for a long time. But but let somebody probably had said some crazy shit like that. Like yo, you got finesse. Fuck out of here, dickhead. What the fuck you trying to say? <laughs> like you gotta get back for that. I ain't gonna lie. That's just me personally, bro. That that's just that's just me personally, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was ashamed for asking questions. Bro, I had the same mentality when I was a student in school. And the funny part is students would come up to me after class and was like, yo, because you was uh, because you asked that question, that shit helped me understand. So it's like don't think cause everybody else around you, yo, how many times we all know, even myself. Y'all ever been in a situation where somebody asked something or somebody say something that you you knew you wanted to say, but you didn't say it? We we all been in those situations, bro. Imagine being that person every time. The question that they weren't afraid to ask. The question they wasn't embarrassed to ask. Or the, or the thing they weren't afraid to say. Think about the person who came in chat earlier. He said, who is Meek? Now, I clowned him, right? But I still told him who Meek was. So now he felt stupid for not knowing who Meek was, but now he knows who Meek is. This is this is a simple example that just literally happened earlier in this stream, bro. That's you need to have that attitude in life, bro. You'll learn so much, you'll be so much ahead of yourself in life. And the funny part is, you got so many people that have such an ego. You got people, right, that comment crazy things. Like, oh, oh, how old are you? Blank or you think you you twenty one or y'all know I was nineteen when I first started creating content right or or like around twenty I think I had just turned or I was like at the end of being nineteen just turned twenty right now you got people that are probably twice my age older than me I mean I, you really can't name any younger dating coach than me bro unless they're new but all the people that have been in this shit I think the closest person I know in my age is probably Steph is cool and Steph is cool like twenty five. But everybody older than me, everybody been in the game on YouTube for years. 
everybody at least had an old ch like a, a channel that started. I actually just found out about Melly when I when we did the Q and A. She said she had a, a whole other channel that had over five hundred k. Now she got this one, and I'm like, damn. Like I started this shit from scratch, from the muscle, from the mud. You can't name no content creators in Philly that 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 came back and put other people on, bro. Now music is different. Even with music, is still copy. It's not like some Atlanta shit. Like Atlanta, that's why I admire Atlanta so much. Stuff is cold. Is stuff is cold. Twenty five or twenty three. I, I I think he's twenty five, right? Now Rod, Rod just blew up. Max just blew up. Like a lot, like I just blew up. We all these people you could name came out of nowhere in the last two years. Even though we may have made videos longer than two years ago, but you have a lot of content creators, a lot of people that blow up in cities, right? And and they blow up in their city and they don't they don't extend a hand back. Or even if they're not going to extend a hand back, they're not they're not gonna claim their city. They don't claim the city, they don't act like they're from the city, they not even homegrown, they just Y'all know what I'm talking about, bro. And that shit make a difference, bro. I know that shit make a difference. Because psychologically, I know some young niggas from different cities, from different hoods, that look at me and be like, yo, damn, like, I look up to Ty because I, I, he relatable. He relatable. And if he can do this shit, I know I can do this shit. Or if I go collab with people, uh, uh, most of my collaborations uh, up until, like, a lot recently, I've been bigger than most of the people that I collab with. Because I've never been afraid to, you know, show somebody some love or, or fuck with somebody's content. You know, I got a fucking um, a old interview I did with my my man MMSUB. I think my guy had literally less than a hundred subscribers. I think I probably had like seventy k at the time, or, or whatever the case may be. And I still went out and did that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, but all this shit means something. He from the city. You know what I'm saying? Like motherfuckers get on and they don't they don't want to like do things that help grow in the city. So I'm like I said, I was telling man, I'm like, yo, listen. I, I blew up from the muscle, like the mud. I ain't have no content creator homies that was bigger than me. I ain't go in nobody videos and get cosigns. Or I ain't come up under nobody wing. This shit was just pure content and consistency. Completely that. And that's not to knock anybody else's growth who, who got put on or who grew with other people. But the conversation is different, man. It really is. When you when you got somebody directly that you know personally in your life that can show you the blueprint and that can pass the ball and that don't have an ego and that don't only want the rock for themselves, man, don't take that shit for granted. At all. At all. If you're from Fresno, you'll never want to rep being from there. Uh honey K, no features on God. And that was that was something I had to do for myself personally, bro. Like you don't know how many people that that are talk all this kind of shit like, oh, such and such made you and all that. I mean, it, who gives a fuck? Because at the end of the day, nobody can make anybody. You still got to grind. I, I don't give a fuck if, if I had an interview with the most famous person on the internet. After that video, I still have to do things to grow my brand and stay relevant. I don't give a fuck if I start music and my first feature is Drake. Like, I still have to drop music, bro. I still have to, yeah, like, nobody can put you on, bro. Somebody can put you in a position to win, and after that, you got to ball out. You got to ball out. You got to ball out. It's no way around that. Unless you what they call a lucky sperm. And that means, you know, your parents is, is millionaires or your parents got it made. But I ain't had that. You know what I'm saying? Poor Smiley. That's all I'm saying. But you look at people who got it right. Because we ain't even got to talk about people who fucked up the money. Because guess what? You could always still get it back. People fall off and get back on. People, you know, you ain't never done. It ain't over till it's over. And it ain't over until you die. You know, some people blow up after they die. So it's literally never over, right? The point I'm getting at is that, like, people, that, people let this shit get to their head too much, man. People let it get to their head too much. And, but the main point that we was making before is like about learning and not being afraid to be embarrassed and try some new shit. So when I was first making my videos, I could have said to myself, bro, you 19, how the fuck you going to think you going to coach people and give people game on women? And already on top of that chat, before this internet shit, I was a very low key and private person. I'm not the type of nigga to like, yo, I fucked this bitch. This bitch was on my dick. I never been type bull where I like the tension, where I like, you know, doing things to prove myself and... Oh, bro, my body count 130. And, you know, I never been type bull, bro. I never been type bull, bro. 
And I never, I don't even trauma dump. I don't even tell y'all, oh, I've been through this, or I, I seen this in my life, or this has happened to me, or this is where my family come from. I, I don't trauma dump because it's always somebody with a worse story. So I don't do none of these things which will provide credibility, but I still say, all right, I'm going to produce this content and you got to believe in what I'm saying. And shout out to the people that's been loyal since day one. But it's been a lot of motherfuckers that was back then that was like, yo, we only see you on E-dates. Where is your, where, we never see you with women. Why you don't post this and post that? That's because I don't like, I don't like the women I mess with in real life. I don't like putting them on camera. Not even for to prove anything or, or not prove something, but because motherfuckers move weird. Bro, motherfuckers move weird, bro. I like a low-key private life. I like, I like to move in silence, bro. I don't like none of that. 130 sounds specific. I just made up a number, bro. I just made up a number, bro. That's not my real body count, bro. That's not my real body count. Oh, God, it's not. Oh, um, niggas for sure dicking. Right, people, people said lots of things. Oh, you know, thinking I'm going to get exposed when I do IRL content or thinking I'm, I'm avoiding uh, IRL content and, and I don't do these things because I don't have that in real life or I'm not who I say I am. Then in all these collaborations with anybody you could fucking name, I've been meeting every time. In person or not. So the, I had to really trust myself enough or have believe in myself enough to say with all the doubt, with all the questioning, mind you, which are good questions. Oh, how can we believe you ain't see or can you do this in real life? Or right, the e date is one thing, this is one thing. Can you do it in real life? And I respect the curiosity, but real always gonna recognize real. Real always gonna recognize real. They ain't watch the old vlogs. The crazy part about the vlogs is those I think that was like that May. But I don't even vlog that much. And you see certain things in vlogs like, you know what I'm saying? And I keep it real. I post everything, chat. I post L's. Like, I put, I even put something in the title that a clown me. Like, Taekwondo got blah, 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 such and such. First stream more, I've been on YouTube for this. I'm like going a deeper wide, just a kind of general. Any tips? Um, You got to work on being a thinker, man. You know, when you're a thinker and anybody has a conversation with you, they're going to talk to whoever you are. And you're going to show them whoever you are in your words. If you're a thinker, you're a deep thinker, you got a lot of perspectives, people are going to see that. If you're not, then they're not going to see that. They're going to see what you, who you are. All right, let's look at the Reddit. And we are like... Stinky girl. Oh, shout out Mr. Lucario. Miles Cunningham, man. That's, you know, they've been fucking with them for a long time. Like, all of them go back. All of them go back for a long time, man. Let me make this extremely clear. If you're with a guy that's a leader, one of two things going to happen. You're going to follow or you're going to get dismissed. That's it. That's how it goes. A guy that has a shit together is not going to sit here no and tolerate and argue with you and go back and forth. No cap. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> what the hell do you think this is? The problem is that a lot of you guys have probably dealt with simps and suckers mm. that tolerate your fuckery of behavior. Mm -hmm. Your no actors cap. don't align with what things are. There's a reason why I asked y'all who's supposed to lead. Are men supposed to lead? Do you think women are worthy of a leader? Uh, of a leader? Most of y'all said no. Do women come with bad habits? Yes, they do. So you're telling me that most men aren't worth... Don't this girl look like Scott Jackson, bro? If she had like a grown woman body. Leaders, women need leadership. They want a man to lead. And <laughs> Myron's such a nerd about this shit. Have bad habits. Oh, no. when, I say it, when he wrong, he wrong. When he right, he right. The man needs to train the girl and correct the bad I'm behavior. Just, I'm just listening right now. Oh, no. No, it's an equal partnership. What the hell? That's... I wanted to see Miles. Hey, I just want Miles you to hear Look, look, look. Okay. Listen. Miles and Makari will be spitting. So what that was, that's it. And then the kids see this shit. And they think that's off the road. Did I just hear a dick suck, bro? Balbini, GG, I appreciate the 14 months, man. Relationship supposed to be. Yeah, no. It, it should not be like that. No, it should be like that. Why? Because what the child should be seeing, he should be seeing mm -hmm. his father being strong and being a leader and his mother being supportive. That's what every generation should be seeing. Yeah, but somewhere I, along the way, we stopped seeing that. We started seeing a bunch of bitch-ass dudes mm. accepting a bunch of different crazy uh, behaviors Preach. and then mm. allowing toxicity after toxicity. And then what happened? A lot of these dudes just left the fucking house. Mm. Left the house. Okay, listen. <laughs> and once, they, and once they leave the house, all of this shit just continues. It just fucking continues and continues and continues. So what I see see has my face. See, let me tell you something. I don't blame single moms. To further that point, I just thought of something. No bullshit. Like, women shouldn't talk to men who aren't ready to be men or aren't ready to, like, or are, like, handling themselves in life. And men shouldn't talk to women 
who aren't ready to be in a relationship or or who aren't who don't have uh the frame of mind to be in a relationship like they want to argue want to be disruptive want to cause stress want drama a lot of people have that even including men a lot of people are addicted to drama you'd be surprised especially with social media these reality tv shows all these tv shows etc especially if she did not have an exemplified relationship in her own household if her if she argues with her mom she her she watched her mom yell at other men like she could bring a lot of this shit to the table so she has to be in a space where she's ready to be in a cohesive relationship and as a man she, he should be ready to be a man to ready to stand in whatever that is whatever his definition of a man is whether he's the breadwinner or whether he's the leader whether he's provides the structure etc but this is only long-term relationship kind of talk. If you're just trying to run down the doonies, then do what you got to do, brother. Still don't take no disrespect, though. Real crazy, man. Real, real crazy. Yo. Yes, sir. You happy for the next man? Keep having fun. Keep having fun, bro. Yes, win, lose, yeah. and draw, have fun. Just keep having fun, bro. Let's go, man. Bro, this is not AAU sixth grade, bro. Like, you in the league, man. Because what, guys? Competition should be fun, man. Winning should be fun. We're focusing their life on women, man. I don't want guys hurting themselves over women. Yeah. There's dudes out here that are killing themselves over women. That don't give a fuck about you. I just told you guys. Women are not designed to be loyal. They're designed to look for the best. So you become the best. I fuck with the passion, except the part about women are not designed to be loyal. Michael B. Jordan is cute, but doesn't have any edge. He just look dot, 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 I don't know, dot, 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 responsible. He look like he know where his birth certificate is. <laughs> yo, yo, basically he's just an actual man. All right, all right. If you take this literally, if you take this literally, you're going to be like, how is that a diss? Like, how is that not a flex? Like, what the fuck? But if you take it for what you know she's implying... Like, I, this really could be a deep video. This really could, not not on this post in the raw, but I, I think I should have made a video on that Michael B. Jordan situation overall. Because why would they call him corny? And it's, it's a difference between the guy who society calls corny and the man who actually does corny shit. They'll call the guy who doesn't go to the clubs, who doesn't party, who stays in, who gets kind of nerdy, who's antisocial because he works so hard, corny. But they won't call the guy who brags about violence and going to jail and, and dresses to fit in with other people and, and doesn't care about his life. They'll call that guy tough. But that's that's the guy who does the corny shit. And it's the difference between the guy who's actually corny and the guy society calls corny. It's like an inverted society. I'm telling you, I could have made a whole video on that shit, but I just didn't. So let me know if y'all want me to go in on that. Because I really the fuck can go in. But like I said, she actually like... Y'all, I, th I think y'all get what she's saying. Y'all take this literally, y'all gonna be like, what? Like, he's a responsible man. Duh, dickhead. But it's just like, she low-key spitting, bro. She, she low-key spitting. Like, like, he the type to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I can come up with another one, bro. Like, I don't know, chat. She low-key kind of <laughs> hit it on the nose. <laughs> she told he looks responsible. What the fuck? I had to move, literally move from my my mom, my whole family. Wasn't we just talking about Mitch? In, in Miami, go to LA, and focus a lot down and not even talk to nobody for real for a year and a half. But I had to find myself. Like at first when I started acting, it wasn't just gravy. Like oh yeah, the, you know it was so easy for me and it just came like that. No, it was I didn't understand acting. You know, uncle, he was going to stars for weeks and it was like Shit, I don't know. He got to keep on trying. And to me, that's what made me go harder. I feel like is I knew that. It wasn't gonna get only rare with the big 18 months, man. He the type to learn to go to school, not to, to learn, not party and get bitches. Um, I did that. No, the point is like she hit it on the nose, bro. Just let her get the example, bro. He the type to see a wallet and return it. All right, that's a good one. That's a good one. That yeah, like he don't, he don't, he don't like he don't got the bad boy vibe, like he like at all. But not not in the, like the bad boy rebel do dumb shit kind of way, but like in like the uh, it's not the extreme. Give it to me. It changed me and made me a better person because I found myself in this. You know, and that whole year and a half, me going back and forth, back and forth, just 
taught me that even though who my dad is, it don't matter who you is, you know, everybody still gotta, you still gotta earn it. I had to live. Still gotta earn it on God. He, he shit, he earned it a lot. I seen the dude on Euphoria, he, the BMF main character, uh, dope, or am I tripping? What other shit he been in? Jake been in some real main shit. I feel like it's another major one I'm missing. It was like a movie. You know, when I realized, bro, that the devil was just as real as God. So when I was in the streets, right, I used to flash a whole lot of money or whatever the case may be. It was on some ego stuff over there, right? Used to. So one day I did a play. And when I did that play, uh, I was just driving in the car, whatever the case may be, after I had got all the cash, right? And I'm looking down at the seat. I think it was like 300000 or something like that, right? And, I'm, and it was all cash. So I'm looking, I'm like, dang, bro, I really done made it. Nigga, I come from nothing. You know what I'm saying? Sleeping <laughs> cash is heaven. Sleeping couch to couch, flow to flow. You he know? look like Ty in his 40s. Bro, me and this nigga don't look nothing alike, bro. <laughs> Shit, we gotta do. <laughs> Get off my dick, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I come from nothing. So I'm thinking, like, dang, bro, I done really made it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm happy, bro. I'm thinking about ways I'm gonna celebrate, whatever the case may be, right? Next thing you know, right, these thoughts just pop up in my brain, right, when I'm looking at the money. You got all this money. What you need all this money. What you need God for? You don't need God. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's literally the thoughts that's roaming in my brain. Like, what you need God for, man? You don't need him. You can buy whatever you want. You can buy whatever you need now. You know what I'm saying? What you need him for? Boy. And that moment, I realized, bro, like, no, that's the more money I was getting, the more those thoughts just kept trying to get louder and louder and louder, bro. Money definitely tried to become my God. And I re and it made me think, bro, like I see all these celebrities or whatever the case may be that people be saying, like they sell their soul and all stuff like that. And I realized having a lot of money will literally mess with your brain like that, bro. And like people that's around that let made them cook, money, let them cook, God, let them cook. they will literally influence these people, bro, to try to think that money is literally their God, bro. But, but money can't bring healing. Money can't bring restoration. Money can't break you from uh, generational curses. Money can't break you from um, your vices, bro, that you want to break as far as, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, bad habits and things like that. Money all personal cannot shit. cannot buy that at all whatsoever. Money can't buy genuine love. Money can't buy genuine joy. It can bring temporary happiness, but it will never equivalate to the joy and love that Eternal. Jesus Christ will bring in your life, bro. It brings people that truly don't care about nothing about you, bro. Because when you lose it all, all the people be gone. Take it from me. When I gave my riches away, everybody turned their back on me. Ain't, no, ain't none of them people still around me to this day. And I'm not saying, bro, just because you're a Christian, you got to be broke. Or just because you're a believer in God, you got to be broke. Because I would never say that, bro. We got riches in heaven. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is stop putting so much energy into He's getting money. Chat. Put it into God, bro. Put it in your true, building a true, true genuine relationship with Christ, bro. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all things will be added unto you. All things could be riches. You know what I'm saying? If that's in his will for your life, bro, if, you, if you're if you going to be rich, you're going to be rich. I'm not saying this. I'm not against it. You know what I'm saying? I'm still paid at the end of the day. But what I'm saying is Motion. stop seeking money so much, bro, and seek God, bro, because God going to add, add it to you. You know what I'm saying? You just got to put him first, bro. God bless y'all. The story started crazy, but no, he cooked. He cooked on God, bro, because it's like, it's so many people that will replace every every type of content in life with, as long as I get the bag. As long as I get the bag. Then they get the bag. They still the same person that they was before they had the bag. The bag going to add on to whatever the fuck you had. You're just going to be rich with it, with your problems, with your doubts, with your self-esteem, with your all that. Or you're going to compensate. And when you compensate... I look at it like you building a table on glass legs. Shit, the moment something shake and them glass legs break, you're going to crumble and fall. And your table going to hit the floor again. You ain't building a sturdy foundation. You building it on um, something outside of yourself. It's not internal. That internal confidence, that internal happiness, bro, is nothing like that shit. It's nothing like that shit, bro. Now, you do need money in this world to, to take care of bills and, you know, eat and things like that as, as the way things are. But, no, he just cooked. Oh, God, he just cooked. I seen this clip. We'll go homeless. This is the steps I do.
The first thing I do is I get a card book, I sit outside Canary Wharf Station, and I'd write, I don't want money, I want books. And all I want is I want all those people walking in at that station going to these highly successful, highly paying jobs. Surely they know something that I don't. Surely they can point me towards a book that I can learn something from. And I'd literally sit there and read while people are walking past, seeing that I'm learning, okay? Seeing that I'm here to learn. And I guarantee there's going to be somebody who walks past and says, you know what? I like that mindset. You're willing to learn. You're willing to grow. If I ever go home. Bro, you're hungry. Bro. Just got handed 50 shades of gray gonna start an OnlyFans. <laughs> Just handed mine comf to the local homeless dude. Yo. The funny part is uh it, it, it's like he almost hit a point at the end like damn, you know, high quality people tend to notice good qualities in others such as people that like to learn people that like to listen people that ask the right questions etc people that are willing to apply themselves right so he made an extreme example of somebody wealthy noticing something in you and shit like that like i ain't gonna lie this is an extreme example hand the homeless person a book what is the beginning of this video bro what color is that a flower on the back red and when it comes to shooting that shot, baby, I'm gonna need you to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, is she in my league? The girl who getting her already, already wrong. Her lash extensions and hair done every fucking week, bro. If you eating the PB and J's that they hand up for free in the school cafeteria, you might not want to shoot your shot at that girl. I'll tell you why, because she may expect you to pay for things that you're not fucking paying for if you got game. Real shooters. Hell no. Hell no. Real shooters. Oh, God, chat. Y'all think she about to cook or she about to burn the kitchen? What y'all think? What y'all think? Might not want to shoot your shot at that girl. Mm. Real shooters, you know, they like to increase their chances of a guess. So if you know she gonna say no before you even walk up to her, what's the point? I'm not saying that shooters ain't gonna shoot. I respect all of it, man. All I'm saying is that let's be practical. Let's be She's trolling. She's trolling. This is a troll. This is a troll. Say you do want to shoot your shot at that sexy salad. Let me tell you what you're going to do. Now you're going to walk up to sexy salad and you're going to give her a unique compliment. Don't just say, you're so pretty. I think you're gorgeous. That's boring. We'll use me for an example. I love that color of emerald green on your skin. People think that's corny. I don't think it's corny at all. If we're being honest, I wish more men would be like that. Be funny. Make her laugh. Most important of all. Those she went two for two. She went two for two on that one. You know what I'm saying? Make her laugh. You got her. Unique compliment. Emerald green on your skin. A little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit advanced for some of y'all young niggas. You know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't hearing that. You know what I'm saying? Be yourself. A lot of women, be prepared for them to tell you, you can fuck away from me. <laughs> you hear that, bro? You probably you probably said something crazy. What's this, bro? I got so many links up top. It's like I'm dragging this shit over. Be accessible but untouchable. Let's unpack this. We are electromagnetic beings. Extra emphasis on the magnetic, because we are magnets. We are constantly attracting people, places, and things that are desired and undesired. Which this nigga got his X Men powers on uh the December two years ago. Makes us accessible by default. The electric aspect of us is the electrical current that connects us to what we're attracting. It's the energy, the frequency, the spirit. Now, since clarity is the wave here, when you spin. clear on some things within yourself, then this affects your electrical current, your energy. And so that clarity expands you in such a way that it creates these invisible and visible energetic lines in the sand which makes you untouchable to those that are out of alignment with that. And even if you think that it's logical for you to be touchable by them, it would be a physical impossibility. When you're not clear, when you're not standing in that clarity, then you become accessible and touchable in ways that leave you completely drained. And it's setting mm -hmm. you up to start practicing and mastering the art of saying no. No is a complete sentence. No, he cooked. The hell he talking about? I mean, without using a bunch of big terms and terminology and all that and all that extra shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, the way I just understand that is, if somebody ain't where you are at mentally, if they are not where you're at mentally, it's it's a disconnect. So when they say something and it doesn't connect to how you think, y'all just only go further apart. For example, let's say I got a friend, right? And this person is pessimistic. 
They're negative thinking. They don't have a lot of confidence. They don't have a lot of ambition, <clears throat> low self-esteem, etc. And I'm ambitious, structured, disciplined. I'm a hustler. I eat, sleep, and breathe this shit. If we were to have a conversation with each other, there would be so many disconnects. All because we just think differently. We see the world differently. We act differently, etc. So we're, we're, we're not on the same frequency. It's harder for us to connect. If I were lazy like them, or if they were ambitious like me, we would only feed off of each other and, and push each other's energies further. Or, the, excuse me, the example he made about clarity. Like, let's say they're lazy and they're bullshitting and they're bored and they're always looking for the next move or a distraction. And I don't have the discipline to say no. They're going to pull me to where they're at. Because I don't have the clarity to stand firm in who I am and, and what I am. You know what I'm saying? What's good, Chinese, bro? Video. Vaughn? Let's I can go. tell by the thumbnail. This is about to be something crazy. Hold on. This shit look hot. Attack on testosterone. This is testosterone in all time. Literally, motherfuckers such as processed estrogen causing foods such as GMOs, foods, and soy. Fact. Toxic processed foods, you know what I'm saying? Cooking. Fact. And it's easily, it's the most accessible food you can have. It's the cheapest, etc. Stress. Fact. Lack of nutritional education overall. Fact. Fluence. Then it's used on fragrances and perfumes, and those probably impact your testosterone, pesticides, alcohol, receipts that contain BPAs, diseases, high levels of insulin, artificial testosterone, steroids, not whole food, lack of sleep, yes, marijuana, and all, and many other things. No, he just cooked. It's you nervous. So this is why I fucked with everything I've seen from Von to Cut, because he not just, he like me when it comes to this shit. I like the science of everything. Weed too, definitely weed. I remember I seen a study that talked about um, high. I don't know which. I don't know if it was THC or CBD. High levels of one of them can literally feminize you. Like like too many levels of that over time can literally feminize you because of the estrogen, because of it, you know of the estrogen in you. And for a woman, it has the opposite effect. You know to increase those levels of estrogen. Um, and a man. But this is why I fuck with everything I've seen from him. Because he get into the science of this shit. Like, this, this is the shit I live for. It's a whole fucking PowerPoint, bro. I like this. I like this. 